Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Today is December 26, 2021. Some interesting things going on. Uh, Chicago city employees are finding out they can't cash their... Uh, checks very interesting i wonder if it's uh a sign of things to come i don't know uh this i i'm not sure if i'm going to be repeating some information but uh this is actually i'm going to put this on youtube and also my channel on uh g and then there's an a and then there's a b.com and uh, I got playlists up there. I have over, oh, I don't know, about 900 Bible studies on that G channel, about 900. Some of them are survival stuff and some other, you know, things. So I think I've got 960 on there. So probably about 900. So this is a on angels in the New Testament. Their purpose in the plan of God. And I'm just going to go through the order that they appear in the Bible. So get out your King James and go to Matthew chapter 1. And we're going to go at verse 18. This would have uh, been kind of interesting. So, all right. So Matthew 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Uh, let me stop right here. Let me explain something to you. The New Testament was written in Greek. There was a guy named Alexander. He was a general from Macedonia, which I consider Macedonia a province of Greek. I mean, they speak Greek. They look like Greeks, you know. But uh, there's people say, oh, well, no, Macedonians, they're not Greeks. You know, it's like saying, you know, Floridians, New Yorkers, Californians, and Texans are not all Americans. Well, you you kind of wonder about New Yorkers and Californians, but, you know, I digress. But uh, Alexander had conquered the whole Middle East. I mean, he conquered from parts of India all the way through Egypt. Conquered it. Now, he died when he was like, oh, I don't know, like early 30s he puffed himself up as some kind of god and i guess god said oh yeah you think you think you're god no problem he died yeah so uh yeah that's how that works but uh they split up his huge kingdom into four parts his four generals said okay hey here's how it works I'm going to take one part, you take another part, you take another part, and you take another part. They split up his kingdom into four parts. And, I mean, he conquered, uh, Alexander conquered uh, what is Iran. And, you know, a lot of people don't know it, but Cleopatra was a Greek. She was a daughter, what I understand, was one of the daughters of one of the generals or uh, that took over Egypt that time period and from what I understand they ruled for I think a couple hundred years let you know a little secret when you conquer a territory the people that you conquered are going to learn your language yeah that's that's how it works I mean, you know, you don't you don't tell them, oh, well, you're going to have to learn how to speak Egyptian. 
Uh, no, you're going to learn to speak Greek. Now, the thing is, uh, have you ever heard of Alexandria, Egypt? It was named in honor of Alexander. It was named in his honor. So, the thing is, the two kings, the two generals, were stupid and started fighting each other and destroy the, each other's armies. Well, then Rome came and found these two weak generals that had fought each other and destroyed each other's armies, and it was real easy to take them over. From what I understand, Rome had only come to the land that they call Israel today uh, about 30 years prior to the birth of Christ believe it or not. So Greek was a very common language back then. I mean, all the educated people would, if you were in business, you had to know Greek. If you wanted to get, you know, sales or whatever, you had, it was a language of commerce, just like English is. Do you know that English is the number one second language in the world? I don't care where you live in the world. If you have a college degree and you're a native English speaker, you can go many, many other countries and get a job teaching English as a second language. Uh, you know, Japan, Korea, Thailand, uh, you know, they teach they teach it because it is the language of commerce, just like Greek was back in the old days. Now, the thing is, God wanted to be the king. And I did a Bible study on that. But the people didn't want him. No, we want an earthly king, just like everybody else all around us, all the heathens round about us. We want a king like them. So God said, uh, okay, you can have it. If that's what you want, I'll let you have it. No problem. Well, they didn't like it. And they did things that made the Lord angry. So the Lord sent northern Israel into captivity with the Assyrians. And then uh, I think like a hundred and something years later, he sent Judah into captivity with the Babylonians. And then they came back. And then they were conquered by the Greeks after Israel came back to the land. I mean, not immediately. It was the Medes and the Persians that conquered Babylon. But then after that, it was the Greeks, Alexander, that conquered the Medes and the Persians. So everybody knew Greek. Or all the educated people did. Even in the time of Rome, Greek, you had to, you know, if you were any kind of an educated person or some kind of a ruler, you knew the language. And, you know, when Paul went to all his letters to like Ephesus, the Ephesians, and the Thessalonians, and what have you, uh, Galatia. I mean, what do you think he was speaking to them? In Hebrew? Oh, if you listen to these her Hebrew roots heretics, you'll, you'll think, oh yeah, he was talking to them in Hebrew. No. He was talking to them and writing to them letters in Greek. Paul knew Greek. He was also a Roman citizen. So I'll guarantee you he knew Latin. I mean, how can you be a a citizen of a country and not know its language. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Only in the United States. You know, like you go to Miami and they don't even speak English or California. Yeah. Oh, but I digress. But uh, so Paul had to have known Hebrew from the scriptures. He had to have known Greek and he had to know Latin. 
trilingual. And when, when Pilate put up the sign above Christ, it was in the three languages. It was in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Yeah, and they didn't like that. Don't say that he's the King of the Jews. Write that he said he was the King of the Jews. And Pilate said, what I have written, I have written. See, the Lord set it up so that when the New Testament was being penned, it was written in Greek, the common language of commerce. It wasn't written in Hebrew. It was written in Greek. And Paul went to Greece, and he taught to them in Greek, I'm sure. You know? It's just, you know, it's like the day of Pentecost. They, the, the, the apostles were talking to everybody in their own language. But Paul probably knew, you know, knew it because he was taught. You know, all these people say, oh, well, you know, Jesus is not his real name. He was a Hebrew and, and Jesus is wrong. Yeah, well, the Bible tells you when you pray, pray in the name of Jesus. That's why they don't want you, they want you to use Yeshua. I'm sorry, Joshua took over for Moses when Moses died. It was the sixth book in the Bible, Joshua. So, you know, Jesus is not Joshua. Sorry. No, I'm not. So let's go read Matthew. Chapter 1 and verse 18. You know, the Lord used Greek. And some of the, uh, some of Israel, northern Israel, settled in Greece after the Assyrian Empire collapsed. And some of the Hebrews of Jerusalem were sold into slavery in Greece. I don't know how many, but let's take a look at that real quick, and then we'll start reading Matthew 1. And that is in Joel chapter 3 and verse 6. We read, The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold, sold into slavery, have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border. If you want to, you can read the entire third chapter of the book of Joel. But I think some of these Grecians were uh, probably divorced Israel. Jeremiah 3, 8, and they'll be remarried in Jeremiah 31, 31. Read the book of Hosea. A lot of prophecy in the Old Testament, people. A lot. You know, I, I'm just amazed at how much prophecy is in the Old Testament. There's prophecy in Genesis, the first book, a lot. But they don't want to read that because, you know, the Bible will uh, raise a lot of questions that pastors don't want to try to answer. They don't like people like me. Hey, pastor, the Bible says uh, Abraham would be the father of many nations. And you say the Antichrists over in, in the Middle East are all of Israel. Oh, wait a minute. That's only one nation. One is not many. Uh, Bob, you're going to have to leave this church. Or we'll call the police and you're trespassing. Yeah, I've heard that before. All right, so Judah and children of Jerusalem got sold unto the Grecians, the Greeks. How do I know they were speaking in Greek? Acts 11:20. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they had uh, when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, they spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. What do you think? They were talking to him in Hebrew? No, they're Greek. You know, there's five thousand partial manuscripts of the New Testament and every single one of them is in Greek. 
You know how many are in Hebrew? Zero. Zero. So, all right, let's, let's go to Matthew 1, verse 18. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Look at that word, espoused. What does that mean? Well, they got a thing called embeds. You know, when you look at a... Uh, when you're looking at a word, let's say you were a foreign speaker and you looked at the word wheat, like what they make bread out of. How do you spell wheat? W-H-E-A-T? Oh, okay. Wheat. You eat wheat. Uh, the word hear, like you, you heard a sound, you're hearing a sound. Well, how do you spell here? H-E-A-R. Oh, okay. Ear. And you put an H in front of it. And you hear. E-A-R, right? Ear. So, take a look at espoused. Well, you got an E. And then you got S-P-O-U-S-E. Spouse. And then you put a D on the end. Espoused. Uh... You know, oh, okay, spouse. What's a spouse? Well, that's either a husband or a wife, depending upon, you know, female or male. Of course, nowadays, uh, with the state, it could be two guys or t two women or whatever. But uh, used to be a spouse would be somebody of the opposite sex. And uh, not somebody that forgot their pronouns or never mind. But... Um, so here it is. It's like being betrothed. Uh, you've, you're promised in marriage, but it's not time yet. You know, it's like being engaged. And the way things are today, I, I wonder if you could find three to five white girls uh, who graduate from public school, you know, high school, that uh, are even virgins. I, I wonder. I really wonder. All right, so, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, so here it is, they're promised. Joseph and Mary are promised to each other. And before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily or privately. He didn't want to make a public spectacle out of her. You know, hey, uh, Mary, I notice uh, you got a baby bump here and, you know, you're supposed to be my wife in the future, but we haven't done anything and you got a baby bump. Uh, what's up with that? Boy, that would have been an interesting conversation, you know. Well, Joseph, I had an angel talk to me and... Uh, uh, and Joseph's probably like, uh, yeah, right, okay. I mean, that would have been, a, you know, is anything too hard for the Lord? And I'm not mocking or making light of or fun of. You know, I'm just, uh, that's how the world would think, right? So Joseph didn't want to make an example of her and, you know, humiliate her. But in verse 20, but while he thought on these things, so here it is, Joseph is thinking about all this. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, can you imagine? Can you imagine after he woke up and and talked to Mary, and uh, that would have been an interesting conversation. Uh, Mary, I'm sorry that I doubted you, but let me tell you this little dream I had. Well, big dream, really. You know, yeah. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. 
Verse 21, And she shall bring forth a son, not a daughter, a son. And thou shalt call his name Yeshua HaMashiach. No, no, no. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Well, good. Praise the Lord for that. Because, boy, I, we, I sure couldn't save myself from my sins. Lord, that probably has an encyclopedia for uh, my sins. If he's keeping track. Verse 22. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin, a virgin. You know, the modern Bibles say young woman. Yeah, a young woman. There was a girl down in South America. She was five years old and got pregnant. I don't think that was a miracle. I think she was six when she gave birth. Uh, her name was Lena, Lena, L-E-N-A, something or other. Uh, a couple of years ago when I looked at her, she was still alive. I don't know if she still is. But she's on record as being the youngest to ever give birth. You know, can you imagine a five-year-old getting pregnant? Uh, was that a miracle? Uh, I don't think so. No. I think she had some help. And if I'd have been the father, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to go there. But let's just say somebody would have, uh, wouldn't have been around. The father would not have been around to witness the birth or to see the child. But, yeah. So there's a big difference between virgin and young woman. And the modern Bibles, uh, they'll say the, the Hebrew word Alma Oh, that just means young woman. So Mary was young when she got pregnant. It really wasn't a miracle. Uh, sorry, my Bible says virgin. That's why I harp on you people about the King James. You know? I mean, a five-year-old getting pregnant is not a miracle. You know? It makes a difference. Besides, I did an entire Bible study on why the virgin birth is so important because sin passed from adam down through all his descendants had to be a virgin birth had to be behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name emmanuel which being interpreted is god with us god with us yeah, yeah, and all these Hebrew roots people, if they want to use a Hebrew name in the Bible, and it's not, you know, Yeshua appears zero times in the New Testament. Zero. You want to use a, a Bible name for Christ that's in the Old and the New Testament? Emmanuel. There you go. But they won't use that. No, 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 no. We want to use Yeshua which comes from the uh, the unbelievers, let's just say. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Yeshua HaMashiach. No! And he called his name Jesus. You know, this Yeshua stuff is basically a denial of the Bible. Think about it. I don't care what their arguments are. It's a denial of my Bible. And as far as I'm concerned, they can all go to hell. Really. Well, I don't believe the Bible. Uh, Jesus and his mother and father, they spoke Hebrew and uh, his real secret name was Yeshua. And, uh, you know, uh, the Bible's wrong. Yeah, no, I don't think so. 
I think they're wrong. You know, that's, I'm not condemning everybody that uses that. You know, everybody finds out things on, on their own, you know, at their own time. But I'm talking about these, these Hebrew roots people that uh, stick in the Shekinah for the Holy Spirit, which is, uh, I, I can't, I don't even want to say the word because I'm going to post this on YouTube, but, uh, let's just say they're, they're not getting their information from the Bible. It's coming from another place. You know, the Hollywood crowd, those like Madonna with their little red string. Yeah. Yeah. That crowd. So. All right. And he shot and he called his name, Jesus. I probably should have done this first, but let's go to Luke chapter 1. We're going to read about the uh, parents of John the Baptist. Can you imagine if John the Baptist uh, showed up today uh, dressed in camel skins at a Southern Baptist church telling them to repent? Uh, he probably, I not probably, he... They, they would definitely call the police and have him arrested for trespassing and public disturbance, you know. But uh, let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 1. Luke 1, 1. For, uh, and oh, by the way, Luke was a physician. So, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth and order a declaration of those things, which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the world, uh, of the word, word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod. Now, according to Josephus, a Jewish historian who was a contemporary of Jesus, from what I understand, he, uh, he said Herod was of Esau Edom, the enemies of God. And I believe it because, you know, he, Herod was, the whole Herod family was bad news. I mean, there's, there's not one good thing about Herod's family in the Bible. Not one thing. Herod's family tried to kill Christ when he was born. And, uh, it goes downhill fast. Yeah. So there was in the days of Herod the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Um, there is, uh, Aaron was the brother of Moses. They were of the tribe of Levi. The Lord had set, a, set aside the tribe of Levi, the Levites. That's what the book of Leviticus was all about. Had set them aside and they were to serve the Lord in the tabernacle, which later became the temple. And it's interesting. E.L., when you look at uh, Elizabeth's name, E.L. is a contraction uh de it's a designation for the lord and then beth means house and i don't know what the uh sa means i have no idea but it has reference yeah i'm just throwing that out there so beth is means hebrew for house so they were of the tribe of Levi. 
both of them. Verse 6. And they were both righteous before God. So, uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in years. They're old. Now, uh, an old guy can have kids, but a woman, once a woman gets uh, around 40, very, very unlikely. Very unlikely. Ask uh, Rod Stewart. He, uh, let's see, I don't know. I don't know how old he is, but he's he's got to be in his 70s, and he's He's uh he was popping out kids in his 50s and 60s. So verse 8. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And that's what they mean when they say holy smoke burn incense and i'm not making a joke but you know and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense and there appeared unto him an angel of the lord i'd be like whoa dude what's what's up with this and there appeared unto him an angel of the lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense and when zacharias saw him he was troubled and fear fell upon him yeah, I'd be scared too. Uh, did I do something wrong and I'm getting ready to be killed? But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Huh. And thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth. Many, not all. Boy, John was a John was a thorn in the side for the, all those rick, wicked evil people. Yeah, John had some choice words for the uh the Pharisees. Called them a race of vipers. Yeah. <laughs> John was something else. So and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. So that's sort of kind of uh, uh, like Samson. Samson was uh, the Nazarene. You know, you weren't supposed to, uh, they weren't going to drink. They don't, you know, they're not going to be a drunkard, that's for sure. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Wow. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Can you imagine that, being filled with the Spirit of God, even as you're being born? I mean, whoa. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. I'm, I think that's Elijah. Uh, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. You know? Hey dude, don't you know? How is this how is this gonna happen? My my wife and I are old. We can't have children anymore. Don't you don't you get it, dude? Verse 19, And the angel answering said unto him, 
I am Gabriel. Whoa. You know, Gabriel's one of those... Uh, Gabriel is... Uh, he's the messenger... Seems to be the messenger for Israel. He says, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold... Thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season. See, there's a, there's a difference between questioning and questioning. You know, if the Lord said... Uh, to me, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna heal you of a disease. You know, there's a difference between saying, oh, okay, Lord, I believe you can do it, and you say you're gonna do it, so I believe you. But how are you? How are you going to do it? You know, asking, okay, how are you gonna do this, Lord? Well, I'm gonna do this and that. Oh, okay, you know. There's a big difference between that and saying. Lord, how's that going to happen? I've got an incurable disease, impossible to cure. So how's that going to happen? You know, there, there's a difference. Evidently, Zacharias was told the angel, you know, I'm old, my wife, we're old. Don't you know old people can't have children? Don't you get it? So, so he's like, oh, yeah? Well, you're not going to be able to speak. Until uh, until your kid's born, that would have been a uh, that would have been a wake up call, huh? And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. Now, from what I understand, you would have groups of Levites, and each one would take, they would take turns, you know, like shifts. But you would, uh, you know, I don't know exactly how it worked, you know, three days, I mean, three months on, three months off. I don't know. I don't know how that worked, but uh, they worked kind of like in shifts. So they would, uh, and it wasn't just like three eight-hour shifts. You know, they would work so many times, like so many weeks or months or whatever, and then they were off. That's how I understand it. So, verse 23 and it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. See, being barren was considered a curse of God. Uh, and having children was considered a blessing. Now you got planned, planned parenthood that tells you, oh, having children is a curse. Especially if they're white. Yeah. So, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God. Now, Keep this in mind. Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail! Thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Boy, that would, uh, 
That would be, that'd be something, huh? And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. You know, what kind of greeting is this? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua? No. Jesus. And shalt call his name Jesus. So Joseph was told what to call him, and Mary was told what to call him. So where do the Hebrew Roots people get the authority to change the name? They don't. They don't. They don't. And shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. You see, David was of the tribe of Judah. Judah was to be the tribe of the kings, as opposed to Levi, the tribe of the priests. Separation of powers there, you know. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign, rule, reign and rule, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. What are you, what's this about the house of Jacob? Oh, okay. Jacob was the father of the 12 tribes. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So Judah, Christ of Judah, is going to reign over all 12 tribes. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She's asking, Oh, okay, how are how is this thing going to work out? Because I haven't been with a man. She didn't say to him, Oh, that's impossible. I, I haven't been impregnated by a man. Don't you understand, angel? That's not how it works. No, she didn't say that. How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? So there's a difference between questioning and asking a question. There's a big difference there. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, H-O-L-Y, that holy thing which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. Wow. You know, there's two places in the Bible where the Bible says that God has a son. Oh, yeah. Uh, a begot begotten son. A begotten son. Oh, yeah. Verse 36, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren for with god nothing shall be impossible that's right for with god nothing shall be impossible and mary said behold the hand made of the lord let it be unto me according to thy word and the angel departed from her and uh i'm sure mary had uh, promised, told the Lord in prayer that, uh, Lord, use me in any way that you find fit. And the Lord took her, probably took her up on her offer. I don't think the Lord did this against her will. No, she was a faithful servant of the Lord. There's people today that will try to twist that, but... Uh, you know, lake of fire, no problem, I don't care. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zecharias and saluted Elizabeth. 
And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. So you got a six month old baby here and it's jumping in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Oh, yeah. See, the Catholics are only half right when they say the Blessed Virgin Mary. Yeah, she was the Blessed Virgin Mary until uh, after the birth of Christ. And then she became the wife of Joseph and had children. She didn't remain a perpetual virgin. Sorry, Charlie. Only the best tuna gets to be star kissed. You know, but, uh, you know, the book of James, yeah, he grew up with a guy named Jesus. He had a mother named Mary and a uh, father named Joseph. And then the Catholics will say, oh, well, they were cousins. Where is that in the Bible? You know, we just read uh, earlier where it says, and Joseph knew her not until the birth of, after the birth of Christ. So, I mean, you know, come on. That's what you get for church traditions and all that stuff. Throw it away. Read the Bible. Uh, verse 48. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. All right, verse 49, for he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent away empty. He hath sent empty away. He hath holpen, which is a fancy word for help. He hath holpen his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed, or children, forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord hath showed great mercy upon her and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. Uh, just so you know, the uh, the Old Testament law was to uh, circumcision was to be on the eighth day. A new beginning. Uh, so they were going to call him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this, this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have, have him called. 
And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. <laughs> yeah, don't... You know, you could ask the Lord how he's going to do things, but don't tell him, Oh, that's impossible. You know. No. Is anything too hard for God? No. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these things were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? Oh, yeah. What kind of kid is this going to be? Oh, yeah. John the Baptist. That's what this child's going to be. And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began." that we should be saved from our enemies. What? The, the, the Israel has enemies? Really? Not to listen to Billy Goat Graham. God loves everybody. God wants to save the whole world. Uh, no. No. God's people have enemies. God has enemies. I think that's going to be my next Bible study after I finish this up. I think so. You know. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. But we're just supposed to love everybody. I don't think so. I don't love the Lord's enemies. Sorry, Charlie. No, I'm not. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. You want to see the holy covenant? Jeremiah 31, 31. The oath which she swear to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. What did John do? He baptized people for the remission of sins, didn't he? Oh, yeah. First time, baptism of water. Second time, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Right? And I'm not talking about slithering on the floor, spouting gibberish. You can call that baptism of the Holy Spirit if you want, but I don't think so. But, you know, what do I know? 78. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. You know, people, uh, the Bible starts with Israel. And when you get to the book of Revelation, there's 12 gates for the 12 tribes of Israel. It starts with Israel. It ends with Israel. Of course, the modern church thinks the uh, Antichrist over in the Middle East are Israel. I don't think so. But yeah, that's just one person's opinion. So, All right, this will be, uh, I guess, introduction to angels of the New Testament, 
part A will probably go to part B in Luke chapter 2 in the next um, in the next uh, part. So I'm just doing this might be a lot of the same material that I did with the Angels series, but I don't know. Eh, doesn't hurt to hear it twice, right? So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. In His precious name, amen.